Tell me you don't know anything about off-road lighting without tell me you don't know anything about off-road lighting. Oh, there it is. Listen, the folks at Oracle are legendary in their own right. They've pioneered some really cool products over the year, and they've done a great job at supporting different enthusiast communities with different products that different vehicle types really love. But either someone in their marketing department doesn't understand the difference between Lumen, Lux, and Candela when it comes to brightness of off-road lighting, or they're trying to trick you. I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt and just assume they didn't watch enough Headlight Revolution videos before diving into the wild world of off-road lighting. But in the spirit of industry camaraderie, I'm gonna set the record straight once and for all exactly where the new Vega LED pod lights from Oracle fall in line with the competitive landscape. When you look at these charts that Oracle published that show the Vega, the SSC2, and the two banger from Morimoto, and the Vega 4, the SS3, and the Morimoto 4 banger, you see that a big thing they point out is lumens when trying to sell you on just how bright the new Oracle Vega is. But that doesn't really make any sense. If you've watched any of our videos, you know that the right way to test brightness on an LED off-road pod is through Lux or Candela. If you wanna see exactly how we test and how we're going to test in just a second, check the link in the video description below to see our video, How We Test. This is how everybody should test. And if you do the same kind of tests that we do at home, you're probably not gonna get exactly the same Lux numbers, but you will get roughly the same percent difference, increase or decrease between them. That's because maybe you're a little bit closer to the wall than we are, or you use a different meter or different ambient lighting. But just know that we always test the same way, and in each test, the brightness is relative to that test. This is why testing for lumen doesn't make any sense with these bulbs. Lumen is a test of total light output like the glow of a light bulb. In fact, lumen testing is really only for light bulbs that emit light all the way around. That's not how LED pods work. There's an LED chip on a circuit board behind an optic that faces forward. We don't care about how much ambient light they make around and how brightly they glow. The other thing is these lumen numbers are all theoretical. They're all total In their chart, they say that the new Oracle Vega is twice as bright as the Morimoto Tubinger. That's so far from the truth, it's gonna make you laugh when you see the real brightness numbers. Now listen, Headlight Revolution is owned by the same company as Morimoto Lighting, but that doesn't mean we're gonna favor them at all. We're doing the test in a completely unbiased technical fashion and just showing you the facts. You can make up your own conclusions from there. It's also important to know that we're testing all spotlight pods because those are the numbers that Oracle posted about. The Oracle Vega 2, the Diodynamics SSC2, and the Morimoto Two Banger NCS all in spot, the Oracle Vega 4, the Diodynamics SS3, and the Morimoto Four Banger NCS all in spot. So now let's dive in and compare how the Oracle chart compares to reality. According to Oracle, the Vega Series 2 comes in at 2,000 raw lumens. The Diodynamics SSC2 Sport comes in at 1,130 lumens and the Morimoto Two Banger NCS comes in at 900 lumens. Choosing to use lumen to describe your brightness in a pod light doesn't make any sense. It doesn't have any perspective. It's like talking about the number 100. Is it a lot or is it a little? Well, that depends. If you're talking about 100 pennies in your hand, no, it's not a lot. But if you're talking about 100 wild dogs chasing you after your dinner at Outback Steakhouse, yeah, that's a lot. It's the same thing here. It doesn't matter how many lumens you have, it's how the light is used, how it's focused, how it's channeled, how it projects into a certain place in front of your vehicle. That's what you're gonna see right here. Let's take a look at the Oracle Vega 2 and we're gonna measure lux, not lumen. Take a look at that light output. It's so bad. Not only is it bad, it's also not very bright. They claim this thing is 2,000 lumens and somehow that's supposed to mean it's brighter or better than the others, but the beam pattern is totally out of whack. If you had a couple of these things on with that square box and a bright light in the bottom left corner, it's gonna drive you insane. Save yourself the trouble just from that alone. But as you can see in our test, 
we measured the Oracle Vega 2 at 2,360 maximum lux. There's our benchmark, 2,360 lux, and Oracle claims 2,000 lumens. Let's move on to the next one, the Diodynamics SSC2. In Oracle's chart, they call out 1,130 lumens. But when we tested it, it came in at 1,858 maximum lux. The beam pattern is way better than the Oracle version. So even though this is less bright, it's still probably a better buy because of the quality control and the beam pattern distribution. So far, they're right about the Oracle light being brighter than the diode light. How about the Morimoto? In the Oracle chart, they call out 900 lumens from the Morimoto Tubanger NCS. But as you can see, this is actually the brightest pod light when we test actual real world brightness, coming in at 3,200 maximum lux, along with a really incredible beam pattern. This shows you that lumen isn't everything. It's about how you make your light and design the beam pattern. This is a classic example of doing more with less. You don't need all those lumens if you know how to create a good beam pattern. And that's what Morimoto has done. Now let's move on to the three inch pods with the Vega 4, the Diode Dynamics SS3, and the Morimoto 4 banger. Again, in the Oracle comparison chart, the Vega Series 4 from Oracle comes in at the brightest at 4,000 lumens. But when we tested it, it's actually less bright than their smaller pod, only coming in at 1,680 maximum lux. How does that happen? Did anybody ever actually test these pods at all? Or did they just release them blindly without paying attention? When we look at the Diode Dynamics SS3 Sport, they say they're almost half as bright as the Oracle pod, coming in at 2,262. But the reality is, this thing came in at 3,320 maximum lux, which is twice as bright as the Oracle. Again, these lumen ratings don't mean anything. And last but not least, we'll fire up the Morimoto 4 Banger NCS. That Oracle's chart calls out to be 1,350 lumens. And this is where it gets funny. This thing comes in at 2,500 maximum lux. That's 900 lux brighter than the Oracle at almost four times less lumen. But the funniest thing of it all is they didn't even test the brightest pod out there. You've got Morimoto lighting, the four bangers, and the two bangers come in two different power levels, and they only compared the low power options. Did you know that if you tested the Morimoto four banger HXB, it'd be brighter than everything? The same Morimoto four banger pod light in the higher brightness model, the HXB, comes in at 4,570 maximum lux. Face it, this chart that Oracle put out is based on nothing, and now you know the truth. You probably don't want to buy the Vega 2 because the beam pattern is ridiculously bad. The Vega 4, sure, maybe that one's okay, but it's definitely not as bright as they make it seem. Listen, if you really wanna know some good lights for your truck or your next project, go to headlightrevolution.com, put in your year make and model, and not only will we show you exactly what fits your truck with our recommendations, you can also see the full lineup of LED off-road lighting that is available to you today. If you have any questions or need help picking out the product for your next project, call us. We've got a whole group of enthusiast lighting experts standing by to help you by phone or email.